If you have a pendulum, this is a pendulum, mass m, length l, you can derive how long it takes for the pendulum to make one complete oscillation. And we call that the period of the pendulum. And I derive in class that that period equals 2 pi times the square root of L over G. You already know what L is. If you don't know what pi is, you might as well leave right now. <laughs> and G is what we call the gravitational acceleration, which is approximately the same everywhere on Earth, but it is very close in Boston to 9.80 meters per second per second. There is something weird about this equation, something that must go against your intuition. And you shouldn't feel bad because it also goes against my intuition. So we have the pendulum, and suppose I bring the pendulum all the way out here. We call that the amplitude of the pendulum, and we let it swing back and forth. There is a certain period. But now we bring it out only this far. It doesn't have to travel much, very much at all. Doesn't that make a difference in the period? The equation says, no, it doesn't. Because if it did make a difference, there would be in that equation the amplitude, which is not. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you, that it is quite remarkable that indeed that period is independent of amplitude if you don't go to extreme values of the amplitude. There is something else in here which is even more non-intuitive. And that is, doesn't it matter whether the bob, we call this the bob, whether it is one kilogram or 500 kilograms? You would think, well, there must be a difference, it must make a difference in the period. But the equation says, sorry, it doesn't. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you too. Our pendulum that we have here is really the mother of all pendulums. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> Fifteen and a half kilograms and the length of this pendulum is 5.21 meters. So now I can make a prediction. So I predict using this equation that's all I do. I put in 5.21, I put in 9.80, I multiply by 2 pi, and I make the prediction that the period of that pendulum is 4.58 plus or minus 0.02 seconds. Now comes the problem. I have to measure the period to convince you that it is independent of amplitude and to convince you that it is independent of mass. So the biggest problem now is Walter Lewin himself, which is my reaction time. How accurately am I able to make that measurement? That has nothing to do with our lack of knowledge of the exact length. Now, the last time that I gave this lecture with the pendulum is 12 years ago. I was 63, and at that time, I told the class, my reaction time is a tenth of a second, and it was. <laughs> but now I'm 75, and so my reaction time is no longer 0.1 seconds. <laughs> what is it? Well, I do not know, but I have a feeling that if you want to be kind to me for a change, <laughs> let us assume that my reaction time at age 75 is now two tenths of a second. So if you can live with that, then every measurement that I make, no matter how long it is, it is uncertain to two tenths of a second. Do not confuse that with that 0.02. That has to do with the length. All right. So. I'm going to first make a, a period measurement at five degrees and then 
a 10 degrees amplitude. And I'm going to measure 10 periods, not one. Some of you may think, well, isn't that a waste of time to do 10 periods if you can get away with one? You will very quickly see why it is 10. You will see that. So the 10t is then going to be some number, plus or minus, my own inability, which is my 0.2 seconds reaction time. I can't change that. And so then I do it at 10 degrees, and then we get again 10t. We get a number, and then we get again plus or minus 0.2 seconds. And I'm going to demonstrate to you that within the uncertainty of the measurements, that I get the same numbers in all three cases, within the uncertainty. So if you're ready for that, you see here the timer, which all of you can see. And here you see the pendulum. And I have two marks on the floor here. If I hold the bob here, then it is five degrees. This is five degrees. And when I hold the bob here, it is 10 degrees. Timing is not easy. The best way to do it is to start the timing when the pendulum comes to a stop that is rather well defined. And then you let it swing 10 times, and then when it comes to a stop, you stop it. And it would help me if you would count how many oscillations we have made. Because then I don't have to look at it. All I have to do is when I come close to 10, I have to watch for the moment of stopping and and then I will end it. So we'll do this first at five degrees. I'm going to start it when it comes here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now you count. You're doing very well. <laughs> You're going to pass this course. point seven, so that becomes that t, that means this whole equation now has to be divided by 10. And now you will see why I measure 10 oscillations. So t is going to be 4.57 plus or minus 0.2 divided by 10, that is plus or minus 0.02 seconds. And you see, comfortably within the prediction. So maybe my reaction time is a little better than two-tenths of a second. <laughs> Don't count on it because you haven't seen the rest yet. So, now 10 degrees. That, that moment is crucial. That moment is crucial. That's where you can lose four tenths of a second and then you look like an idiot in front of your students. <laughs>
Now comes the hardest part. The hardest part is that we have to change the mass of this object. <laughs> and the way that I'm going to do that is prominently demonstrated on the cover of my book. <laughs> yes, I'm going to hang on that pendulum. It is a difficult demonstration. First of all, it is painful. It really is. <laughs> Second, the timing is tricky. Because when you look at the pendulum and when you see it stand still, you know, that is really well defined, plus or minus 0.1 second. When you are swinging yourself, however, <laughs> then you can only do it by sensing the moment that you think you stand still. And that's what I will do. And then you will do the counting. And this is very unpleasant. <laughs> it is. <laughs> or there's something else I haven't told you. If you're a good physicist, you will say, if you're going to sit on that bob, then effectively you bring the mass of the bob up, and so the length of the pendulum will shorten, and so you get a shorter period. And I know that too. <laughs> Therefore, I will have to stretch my body so that when it is here, that it is almost completely parallel to the floor. If I don't do that, I will not be able to convince you that the period is independent of the mass. And that makes it very difficult for me. You ready? Okay. Oh, this really hurts. Can't you count a little faster? Ten T <laughs> with Walter Lewin. What is it? Forty five point nine plus or minus zero point two. Period is four point five nine plus or minus zero point zero two. I told you, physics works.